Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an electrifying problem for you all today. This one was from the 2021 China Hong Kong Math Olympiad. So very recent. Uh, and it was number three out of four on the exam. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over my solution. Uh, so we have a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD so that AB is equal to AD. Uh, e is a point on the segment CD so that BC is equal to DE. Uh, the line AE meets the circle at F. Uh, AC meets BF at M. We let P be the reflection of C across M. And we want to show that PE and BF are parallel. All right, so I'm going to use a lot of projective geometry throughout the solution because whenever we have a lot of intersection points like this, uh, projective geometry is often a good idea. So one of the first things I noticed is that um, if PE and BF were indeed parallel, uh, since M is the midpoint of PC, um, we're given that, uh, that's the same as showing that if this intersection point were G, so I'm going to label it G, uh, that's the same as showing that CG is equal to GE. So I think this is kind of a simpler way of thinking about it, really just proving that CG equals GE. And from there, since we know that CM equals MP, that would prove that PE is parallel to BF. All right, so how do we show that CG is equal to GE? Um, so whenever we want to show two segments are equal, uh, projective geometry is often a good idea. Because uh, that's the same as showing the, that the cross ratio E, C, G, infinity is equal to 1. So that's going to be my strategy. Basically, G splits up the segment and G splits up the segment E, C into a 1 to 1 ratio if the problem were true. And so if you consider the cross ratio E, C, G and the point at infinity, it would equal 1. All right, so that's what we're going to try to show. We're going to try to show that cross ratio is 1. And I am going to try to project those four points, uh, E, C, G, and the point at infinity through point F onto the circle. So that's my strategy here. Um, but to project F through the point at infinity, that would mean I would have to draw the parallel through F to the line C, D. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna draw that parallel line and I'm gonna let it meet the circle gamma at a point uh, F prime. So now I'm going to do the projection. All right, so we're projecting uh, E, C, G, and the point at infinity uh, through F and on to the circumcircle gamma. So E goes to point A. Uh, C stays at point C on the circle. Uh, G goes to point B on the circle. And F goes to F prime, because if we project F through this point at infinity, uh, that's the same as drawing the parallel through F to line CD, and that meets the circumcircle at F prime. All right, so we want to show that this cross ratio here is equal to 1. So here is my idea, um, which I'd seen similar things to this before. Um, so we know that CD is parallel to FF prime by construction. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, there's a symmetry about the figure you can see that FF prime and CD share the same perpendicular bisector. Uh, so if we reflect the points C and F prime across that perpendicular bisector, uh, we get two other points on the, that are labeled, uh, points D and F. Um, and I'm gonna try to do the same thing with A and B. So I'm gonna draw the parallels through A and B uh, to FF prime and I'm gonna let them meet the circle at A prime and B prime. So all four of these segments are parallel. So I'm gonna write that out. So AA prime is parallel to BB prime, is parallel to CD, which is parallel to FF prime. All right, so what I'm gonna do is all four of these segments have the same perpendicular bisector um, which I'm going to call L, and that's because they're all parallel chords in a circle. Uh, parallel chords always share the same perpendicular bisector. And so uh, I didn't draw that perpendicular bisector L, 
but if we reflect these four points across L, uh, the cross ratio would stay the same. So the cross ratio ACBF, well, if we reflect A, we get A prime. If we reflect C, we get point B. If we reflect B, we get point B prime. And if we reflect point F prime, we get point F. So now we have a new cross ratio, and we want to show that this is one now. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little rearranging of this, uh, and you'll see why later this will come in handy. But if you have a cross ratio, you can just swap um, the two first and two last terms, and it'll stay the same. Um, all right. So um, before I do that, um, I am going to let a, B prime meet C, D, and you'll see why I do this in a moment. Um, so uh, A, B prime meets the line C, D at point H. Now I'm going to move over some of the text just to make more room. Okay. So I'm going to swap the first and last two points, as I mentioned, uh, for later. So what I want to do is I want to show that this is equal to 1, B prime F, A prime D. So I'm going to project through point A onto the line CD, okay? So if I do that, uh, B prime goes to H, so I'm just going to write this out. So I'm projecting through point A onto the line CD. Uh, so B prime goes to H, which we just constructed. Uh, F goes to E. A prime uh, that goes to the point at infinity because A, A prime is parallel to C, D. And then D uh, stays at point D because it's already on the line C, D. All right, so we want to show that this cross ratio, H, E, uh, C, D, infinity, and D is equal to 1. But it's easy to simplify this. Uh, that's just equal to D, E over D, H um, because... If we take the segment HE, well, CD infinity, that's infinitely far away, so it splits the segment into a one to one ratio. And so we just be, um, this would just be equal to DE over DH, which we want to show is equal to one. And so we want to show that DE is equal to DH. Uh, but in the problem statement, we're given DE is equal to BC. So essentially, we want to show that dh is equal to bc. So how do we do that? Well, if you look very closely, uh, it turns out that we can show that triangle abc is congruent to triangle adh. So that's how I'm going to try to do it. And here's where I use the fact that ab is equal to ad. All right. So I'm going to use this fact, so AB is equal to AD, so at least one of the, the three sides of those two triangles are equal. And then I'm going to use angle side angle to prove that they're actually congruent. All right, so first uh, we want to show, first I'm going to try to show that angle BAC is equal to angle DAH. Um, so if you look at those two angles and the arcs they intercept uh, in the circle gamma, uh, they intercept arcs BC and B prime D. Uh, so if those two angles uh, were indeed equal, uh, we'd want to show that those two arcs are equal. But that's clearly true because those two arcs are intercepted by parallel chords. So if you take arcs BC and B prime D, uh, since BB prime is parallel to CD, those two arcs have to be equal. So I'm going to write this out. So since BB prime is parallel to CD, the arc BC of the circle has to equal the arc B prime D. And from there, it's easy to see that angle BAC has to equal angle HAD. So I'm going to write this out. So we have angle BAC. Uh, and it intercepts arc BC. So it has to be the same as angle DAB prime, which intercepts arc B prime D, which is the same. And angle DAB prime is equal to angle DAH. Okay, so those two triangles ABC and ADH, uh, they share this narrow angle. And it's easy to show that they share another angle too. Um, angle ABC has to equal angle ADH. Uh, that's easy to see because ABCD is cyclic. So I'm going to write this out. 
So um, since the angle in a cyclic quadrilateral, ABC, is equal to the exterior of the opposite angle, uh, we have angle ABC is equal to angle ADH. And we're given in the problem statement that AB is equal to AD. So that's enough to show that those two triangles are congruent by angle side angle similarity. All right. So triangle ABC is, I'm sorry, angle side angle congruence, not similarity. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADH. Uh, they share a side and two surrounding angles. All right. So if that's true, then that gets us where we want, because that means that um, DH is equal to BC, which is equal to DE, which would mean this cross ratio has to be one. All right, so now we're gonna start working in reverse. So DE is equal to BC, which we're given in the problem statement, and BC is equal to DH, since those two triangles are congruent. And if that's true, then that means this fraction is equal to one. So all these cross ratios going back to the beginning are equal to one. All right, so one is equal to DE over DH, which is equal to um, this cross ratio, which is equal to this cross ratio. And if you trace it all the way back, it's equal to this original cross ratio, uh, ECG, EC infinity. And we noted before that that's equal to GE over GC. Um, that's because G divides E and C into this ratio, and the point at infinity divides it into a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's just GE over GC, and so since that's equal to one, we have GE is equal to GC, all right? But uh, I also mentioned before that PM is equal to MC, since P is the reflection of C about M. And so that solves the problem, because if GE equals GC, and MP is equal to MC, that means that PE is parallel to MG, which is the same as saying PE is parallel to BF, and that solves the problem. So like I mentioned, this was number three out of four on the exam, so probably one of the harder ones, but I feel like knowing projective geometry uh, really helped make it a little bit easier. Um, so it's definitely a very use useful tool to have in your kit. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.